everyone, this is Melissa from Melissa Made, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a COVID coloring tutorial using Kitten Kindness from Whimsy Stamps. And I'm going to quickly show you how to stamp onto acetate with red rubber stamps. This is a little trick I use because you can't see through the red rubber like you can the other Whimsy clear stamps. So what I do is I take a piece of acetate and lay it over my clean sheet of paper. Now, I already stamped these kittens, but I wanted to show you this technique that I like to use. And all I do is um, put my magnets down on this um, Tim Holtz stamping board, and then I place my stamps about where I think I'd like them to be on the paper. And actually, I wanted to flip over the paper so you could kind of get more of an idea of what I'm doing. So I put the acetate down, I place the red rubber stamp over the top. And again, this is Kitten Kindness from Whimsy Stamps. I wanted to show you the outside package. It always helps when you go to purchase it if you can actually kind of get a visual on the packaging. So again, I just put the stamps down onto the white cardstock. This is a piece of cardstock cut four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm just taking the three kittens that come in the set and kind of placing them onto um, the acetate in about the position I want them. And then I'm simply putting down my magnet, closing my stamping um, pad, and then I'm going to ink up those stamps with my Memento ink, which is what I like to use when I um, Copic color. And again, this is this will not stay on to acetate, so I know that I can safely wipe that piece of acetate off after I'm done. And um, I'll still be able to use the acetate. I like to use the back of stamps. You know how when you get a set of clear stamps, they come with a front cover and a back cover? That's typically what I use. But I just gently stamp this down onto the acetate. And this gives me a nice idea of where the little kittens are going to be on um, the cardstock. This is a little bit hard to see um, because of the glare, but uh, the kittens are about in the right position. And now I take those off of the stamping block and I'm going to go ahead and put on the sentiment that I would like to use. Um, this is a happy birthday sentiment. Again, it's really hard with red rubber sometimes to see your placement. Um, even if you cut the uh, the sentiment and the image out as close as you can get it to the edge of um, the stamp, you still can't really tell where you're going to be stamping. So using acetate like this is a, just a little trick and something I really like to do to make sure that when I'm stamping onto a card that I know exactly where those images are going to show up and what the placement of my sentiments are going to be as well. And so now um, I do like the layout that I have, and then I would normally go ahead and stamp right onto my sheet of paper. But again, I've already done this, and you can see that they fairly um, line up fairly accurately to what I had before. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and clean off this piece of acetate, and I simply take a cloth, it's not damp, it's just dry, and wipe off the ink that I didn't use. And then I can put that back on the stamp set that I borrowed it from, and I'm ready to start coloring my little kitties. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just take uh, some copy paper, simple, you know, printer paper, and put it down on my mat, um, and then I like to put my image on top of that, and that's because if your Copic markers soak through, if you don't have an absorbent piece of paper below, um, often what can happen is that ink will go through and then come back up on your paper and spread outside your lines, so I really like to um, have a piece of paper underneath me as I color. And, um, I kind of want to show you three different ways I like to color um, kittens and fur in general. Um, and I'm going to start by showing you how I do a little tiger striped kitty, a little gray tiger striped kitty. And I'm simply starting with my C00 Copic marker and um, brushing in that color. I like to um, what's called flick my Copic marker to get nice thin edges and those edges are easier to uh, blend with other colors. And I like to start out by doing this on what I would consider the shadowy parts of, of the kitten. And the way I'm shading him is not necessarily that there's um, some 
very specific light source, but I kind of think, okay, the light's coming from the top, so the places that are going to be shadowed the most on the kitten are the bottom edges of, you know, each portion of its body. So now I'm just going in with my C3 and flicking up the darkest color I'll be using here for the base of the cat's fur. And again, I just go into the shadowy places and um, simply flick that marker in. Now that I've flicked in most of that C3, I'm going to go to my mid-tone color, which in this case is C1, and I'm just going to blend out that um, C3 into the white portion of the cardstock. And you can see me using kind of a circular motion to blend and then flicking upwards into the white part so that then I can use my C00 to blend even further. And again, I'm just going to go all over those C3 spots and kind of flick outwards into the white space. And I do this for each portion of the cat. And now when I'm done with the C1, I'm going to go back to my C00 and go ahead and kind of blend in all of those colors together and um, smush them out into that white space and finish coloring off this kitty. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you not to go over your darkest color with your lightest color, and the reason that you typically wouldn't do that is because when you go over the dark colors with your light, in this case C00, um, it often will um, make that color look a little lighter and so you lose some of your contrast but for me I was more interested in having the smooth blend because really the focus of this cat's fur is not going to be so much um, the uh, you know initial shading but the cute little stripes that we're going to put in. So I'm going to pull out two markers here C5 and C7 and I'm simply going to put little stripes onto the cat in kind of a zigzag pattern um, in certain places of its fur. And I start wide, um, close to the edge of the cat, and then I um, kind of zigzag towards um, the cat's face. And you can put these anywhere you want, and it ends up looking very cute and very much like a nice little striped kitty. So again, I'm staying with the same color family. This is C5. Um, so I'm staying with those cool tones and simply adding a few stripes here and there to the cat's fur. And once I um, pick the places that I want to see those little stripes, then what I will do is go in with my C7, which is a little bit darker, and just add lines, um, wider lines again close to the edges, and those lines shrink as they get to the face. Okay, and now I'm going to color the little kitty on the bottom, and again, I'm going to start with the same C00 uh, to give this kitten a um, little bit of a shadowy base. Um, and what I'm kind of thinking here is that this is a white kitten, and I am going to give him some shading first. So even if your um, subject is, has white fur, it's always nice to add a little color and a little shading. Um, to make sure that the image doesn't look so flat. And so I'm simply putting in the zero, zero, and um, here I'm thinking about how the um, little paw that's close to the bottom of the cupcake, if that's an inside or an outside paw, and I decide that that is a front paw kind of on the back of the kitten. And so again, I'm simply adding some shaded areas. And after I use my C00, I'm going to go in with my C1 because I don't want this to be very dark shading. And I'm just going to go back over those areas where I think there would be the most shadow.
kind of on the bridge of the top of the nose and around the bottom of the chin and then about around each paw and kind of on the belly and you know those areas that would be in shadow. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and make this little kitten a calico. Um, and calico cats, as you know, have kind of large splotches of color on them, typically in oranges and browns and blacks. So you can have all kinds of colors, I guess. Um, but this one in particular is going to be brown and black and orange. And so I'm starting with my brown, and that's going to be my E70 series of Copic markers. And I'm starting with E70 and simply putting in um, splotches of color here and there on the cat's fur. Again, this is completely random. Um, you know, I'm just trying to pick little parts of the fur that will look cute brown while leaving a space for other colors. And then I go in with my E74 and I kind of shade the center of those splotches that I put in. And that's because when I blend out with my next colors, it's almost going to look like those dark spots are kind of just fading a little bit into the white, which makes it look a little bit more natural than um, if you would just have these large dark splotches in the middle of the white fur. And so now I go in with my E71 and kind of blend out that brown into the E70 that I already placed down. And then after I'm finished with that, I'll simply go over all of it with my E70. And I'm going to do this for each color that I'm using. So the orange will be YR12, 15, and 17. And then I'll also be using black, which is 100, with a C5 and a C7. And again, I'll just shade with the lightest color wherever I want the splotch. Then I'll go in with the darkest color and kind of fill in the center, blend out with the mid-tone, and then once again go over everything with the lightest color in the series. Okay, and for the last kitty, I'm just going to show you um, a technique that you might have seen before using the colorless blender. And that's simply taking the colorless blender, putting it on a um, little piece of fabric and um, removing or pushing out some of the color um, on the kitten so it looks like the fur is textured. But I'd like to give you a few hints um, for this technique because oftentimes you just go in and you color and you smush down that colorless blender and you get some strange effects with it. So um, I kind of want to show you specifically how I do it to make my results the best that they can be. Um, my first tip is to not color anything else, any other part of the image, just the fur that you want textured. And the reason why I do that is because if you pick a cloth that's a little bit bigger than the fur or the, you know, the portions of fur that you want to color and you try to smush that onto it, it's going to bleed all of your colors or, it's, you know, it's going to push around all of your colors. And so in order to keep it nice and clean so you have very little cleanup at the end, I always just color the fur first. And then when I'm done adding the texture using the colorless blender, then I'll color the rest of the image. So what I'm doing here is again, taking that same E70, E71, E74 series of Copic markers and um, shading my kitten, um, just like I've done the others. I'm, you know, top light source, shading from below first that the darkest areas are the lowest portions of the kitten's body and just simply flicking that dark marker up so that I can get a nice blend with my E70 and my E71. So that's the first thing that you should do. Go ahead and shade the cat like you're not even going to, you know, you're not even going to add any texture to it.
okay, now that I've finished um, coloring my kitten, I'm going to take this washcloth that I have and I cut off a piece of the washcloth, just a small corner, and then I'm going to use this various ink colorless blender solution that comes in this large bottle, which is nice because you can um, just use this for cleaning your markers or adding texture to things as you will. So I put some alcohol onto this washcloth and I'm kind of brushing all the fibers of the washcloth to stand up straight because that'll add the nicest texture. And then I kind of roll it into a small area um, so that I can control a little bit more where I'm putting that colorless blender. And then I like to dab some off because if there's too much on there, what's going to happen is you're going to remove a ton of color and push around a ton of color and it's going to look a little odd. And then all I do is simply gently, lightly touch that washcloth to my colored areas of my kitten. And you can see quickly that what is happening is um, it almost looks like I'm adding white dots all over to all over my kitten. And I simply do that one time. You could go and do it again to push around a little bit more color. But honestly, what I like to do, I think it looks a little unnatural just to leave the colorless blender dots like, like it is. Um, what I like to do is once it's dry, I like to go back in with my E70 and use kind of a stippling technique. And that's where you add uh, small dots. And I take the E70 and go into the whole um, area of the cat into the shadow spots, into the light, lighter spots of the kitten, and um, I just smush that marker kind of in with those dots. Now, I never want to go in with my darkest color only because I would like to maintain my, sh my shading that I have already done on this kitten. Now, you can go in, you know, to the um, light areas with your darker marker and it might give you a really nice effect. I just typically like to um, keep my darker shades like this E71 to more of the shadow area of the cat so that, again, I maintain that integrity of my shadowing that I already placed down. And so after I'm done with the E71, I'll go back in with an E70 and kind of continue the stippling and smushing in um, of the color into this little kitten. And you'll see that he gets kind of a nice texture by using that colorless blender and then the stippling technique. Okay, so that ends uh, the tutorial on how to color uh, kittens' furs using a few different techniques. Um, you can stay tuned, and I'm just going to simply color um, on these kittens until my uh, camera runs out of juice. And um, at the very end, I will show you the completed card. Uh, it turns out very cute, and I love this technique, adding multiple stamps to one card. You don't need design paper. You can use the products that you have, either your colored pencils or your cup of markers and simply your stamps. Um, there's white space on the card, which um, kind of makes your images pop. So, you know, if you enjoyed this technique, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to Melissa Made 2, make sure to smash that bell, as everyone says, on um, YouTube so that you can get notifications. Um, for when I put out new videos and hopefully I will be adding more tutorials in the future for Copic coloring and all kinds of projects. Thanks and have a great day.